everybody, and thanks for tuning in to the Effort of Community Church weekly podcast. A conversation with our pastors and leaders meant to continue encouraging you to know God, know freedom, know purpose, and make a difference. Hi folks, Jim Merman here, one of your teaching pastors, and I'm here with Matt Swords, pastor of discipleship. Thrilled to be doing this week's podcast as we're discussing the great message Galen Burkholder brought us around the book of Jonah, and uh, let's just start there. Okay. Um, I was thinking since yesterday, um, and sometimes it's hard to put yourself into these abstract things of what would totally cause me offense. Like, like Galen yeah. ended with that question, like, who would God show mercy to that would yeah. freak you out? And I would, and I was thinking uh, yesterday that there's two forms of mercy. One is I'm surprised by mercies that I get to see sometimes. Yeah. Other times I'm offended by it. Yeah. And now I don't get the offense one much. Um, I think there's one person I could identify where their salvation would almost reach a fence level to me. Sure. But I must admit, I walk around really surprised uh, that some people who are so sideways God does something, right? You, yeah. you mentioned somebody you got offended by. Is that a personal relationship that you would have experienced? That the idea, or is it just is it biblical it, it's or a, what? It's a person I'm aware of a mass kind of atrocity thing that I I know. I used to work in anti-human trafficking, and okay. we call it one of the world's. When I say we, we were part of an investigation that calls one of the world's worst predators um, in wow. Southeast Asia. And man, if you hear the stories, yeah, you don't uh, want to hear the. Stories. Oh my gosh, you know you. So you sit there and you're like. Wow. And then uh, it, I have to say, like, if I would find out that this guy mm-hmm. became a born again Christian, like, wow. yeah, talk a little bit about the kernel thing, because you were mentioning that. The well, of I mean, there's there's so many ways we can run this convert, you know, run with this conversation. Um, but uh, if, if you didn't hear the message, obviously, please go and listen to it. Uh, but Galen brought up the story of the kernel and Ethiopia. Yes. And and he was the leader of the, the Communist Party that that was responsible for um, hundreds of thousands. I'm not sure what the number was. Uh, a lot of one million death. total. Yeah. That's it's unreal within a very short amount of time. And and then he Galen, you know, I'm sure reserved a lot of the detail and yet shared enough that it was just it's it's painful to hear. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not comfortable to be in that position to listen to. Uh, and then to end it with and he. Galen saying that he heard report that this gentleman who is still alive actually became a Christian, um, and 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 in a, in a very uh, powerful way, Galen just brought that to the surface so as to be able to relate to Jonah's offense at the idea that God would give mercy to yeah. Nineveh mm-hmm. because of how horrible of a people they were and what they did, um, and. It's easy to look at Jonah from a distance and say, well, come on, Jonah, God's amazingly mm-hmm. merciful. Um, get with the program. And then he brings that story in where I found myself just sitting there, you know, allowing myself to really think through, like, man, you know, kind of replaying the story of the different atrocities and, and just like, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. It's just, it didn't, it was hard to sit there. Yeah, it really it, was. I think, first of all, Matt is you're one of the things I love about you. You are you have a gift of being in tune with what others are experiencing, right? This, there's just this in, not just intuition, <clears throat> but this emotive gift that I think you experience that in a powerful way. I think where I get thrown off in how much mercy is shown sometimes is as a leader, I want to see mercy extended to people, but I also have to be factoring in. But I got to be careful to make sure that person has truly changed and protect the community from I'm that sure. person. And so, yeah. so for instance, I, I used to oversee applications at a graduate school and someone comes in with a past felony that's pretty bad. It's seven years ago, but it's such a difficult past felony. I have to decide if I can let them into the larger community that I'm stewarding, sure. um, even if it appears they've, quote, already paid in some way for it, yeah. that mercy mercy is complex. Mm-hmm. I mean, thank goodness that God's wise enough and loving enough yeah. to actually be able to determine. Because you're right, I might have to cross people off the list that uh, I simply don't know what to do with or don't know how to get them exposed to the right. community again. Right. Yeah, it's. I think there's, there's two books that I have been reading. Um, one is Oswald Chambers' uh, My Utmost for His yeah. Highest. The other is, is, a, is a book by uh, the late atheist um, Christopher Hitchens. He mm-hmm. wrote a book called God is Not Great. And I'm reading that uh, simply because of the 
the perspective of the, at least his specific atheist perspective, as well as it captures a broad perspective of offense people have at the idea mm -hmm. of God. So it's funny, I bring both of those books up because I can't remember which, where I read this from. I think it's Oswald Chambers' book, but he talks about um, the, how, uh, um, where, let's say I offend you, I do something that's wrong for you, yeah. but somehow God steps in and forgives me for it. Like right. it wasn't, to what degree was this actually God's offense? That's right. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, like, right, right. So you're like, hold a second, like this person is the primary person it has to that be was wrong right. right and so in in this specific story that galen brought up i've just been i've just been thinking That's on that great. statement of like to what extent is god truly the the main offense or the main offended uh, uh, party yeah thank you yeah. i couldn't find language for it um and yet the offense is also there because you i have to think through in what way is god going to redeem all of the lives that were impacted exactly by right. this atrocity and that's, that's partly why I get back to the fact that in theology, we oftentimes revert to the fact that we have two things pro proven over and over in the Scripture, that God is wise enough and He's loving enough right. to manage that delicate equation. Right. And if God has actually presented God's self as a father, He actually is watching children go through that. So it seems like we feel like the more offended party, but right. we have no idea the depth of pain that God's even right. willing to absorb as a parental figure in that too right tough tough stuff it is it's it's really uh the depth there is great and then obviously bringing it back into the jonah uh yep. storyline where it's in that moment that you realize wow i can understand how jonah was sitting there offended yep. Yep. uh and just like watching the mercy of god you know be poured out on a people and then him totally you know left out to dry so to speak literally under the sun you know just That's right. cooking there hanging on to a fence and and um it's just it's just a powerful story and the way galen made it applicable to where we are in modern day in our personal experiences was just masterful exactly right and of course uh galen i just want to talk for a second about what a gift it is to have someone like galen and marie yeah. in, in our community um i mentioned it if you were a part of our services as i was introducing galen i was just like isn't it wonderful to be in a community where there are different streams of the church or different perspectives yeah. in the kingdom of God on what God's doing in the world. Because I've been a part of faith communities that get can get mildly insulated sure. or pick up just one issue and it becomes the, the thing through which they interpret everything else yeah. that they're doing, right? But I have to say, I, part of me left the weekend, my heart was so full because I felt safe and almost protected that I'm part of a community that reminds me um, uh, that I don't get over focused, not always in a negative way, but like I sometimes forget the lost in yeah, the world. Sure. Because I see enough challenge, enough struggle here at home, right? Oh, yeah. That I sometimes forget God is always on the move yeah. after the lost everywhere, whether that's in Ashland, Toledo, mm -hmm. Tajikistan, and <laughs> just to have someone jump in. Yeah, Tajikistan. I thought I try to use that word once a week. I didn't. But, <laughs> never heard of it. That's it great. Is. It's one of the old. Soviet bloc nations. All right, um, that was going too far, but I just wanted to say that I, I also just was spent this weekend not just full of the revelation, but just so thankful that we have so many great voices in our yeah. community. Speaking of which, I just brought to mind Lisa Hostler is going to be bringing the word here in a couple of weeks, um, and so really excited to have her speaking um, and definitely adding to what you just mentioned is the depth and, and wide uh, net of um, perspectives that are influencing us as a body here. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm looking forward to it. And um, I, I want to just hit one more point that Galen talked about, and then uh, uh, we'll introduce, yeah, more and more of where we're heading in the next few weeks. But mm -hmm. how about the thought that God doesn't tempt us, but he does test us? I thought sure. that was a great use of those two words, right? Like, yeah. like tempt would be almost teasing in some ways, right? Yeah. But test seemed to be something that's oriented toward our growth, not just mm -hmm. something he needs to know, but always seems to be associated with our growth. And, and that is, it, it is one of those deeper discipleship topics that uh, coming to peace with the God who tests our abilities. I just remember the other day that I, I texted my son and I'm like, hey, I need you up by such and such an hour because I'm going to watch you check the oil in your car, mm -hmm. right? And this ranks, on a Saturday morning, this ranks about 50th on a, 40, a list of 40 things my son wants to do. 
Uh, but in a sense, in my own way, I'm like yeah. testing, like, I need you here at this time. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm just going to watch you walk through it. Yeah. And he could sit and say, Dad, come on, man, we've right. done this before. But it's like at, at one form, I'm doing it out of a peculiar form of love yeah. and testing his ability because yeah. cars blow up. But all that to say. Uh, well, that's a, that's a real... That's a reality that we're all going to face, whether you believe in God or not. Jesus himself said tomorrow has enough trouble of its own. You know, like, that's not the most encouraging thing that Jesus has said. Um, Mm -hmm. And so just learning how to navigate that reality that, um, I guess what helps me to to, to face any test I might be going through is just the way that I would, as you mentioned, Kent, um, with my kids, you know, my kids are a different age. So Benjamin, who's five, he, you know, He's got a hundred strengths, and and one of the um, opposites of those strengths, and one of a weakness that we need to work on is just his attentiveness. He can be really distracted really easily, mm-hmm. and and so in my with that perspective in mind, he doesn't tempt us, but he does test us. It's I'm aware of where he is at in his development, and I'm aware of what he can truly manage, and what is just on the the red line right. of you know this is going to be a little exactly but useful, right? yeah and. And I'm here with you, and if, like, I'm not going to cause, command him or ask him to do something that uh, kind of tips the scale out of testing appropriately um, into tempting and just overbearing. And and although we can feel like this is too much, I can't manage it, it actually can be a, a, a place of encouragement to realize his word promises, Ephesians 1, 3, we've been blessed with every spiritual blessing. That's right. Like, That's we lack right. nothing. Uh, That's I think right. it's 2 Peter 1, 3. We uh, lack nothing necessary for life and godliness. That's like right. in every situation, although we might be being, we might be facing tests. The reality is that I have everything I need to to pass this test. Absolutely, I think even Galen used the example of Jesus standing and actually sending his disciples out on the Sea of right. Galilee, right. and then staying behind. And, and, and I've heard this preached before that the vantage that Jesus' point he would have been at would have been able to observe them in their struggle, right? Yeah. And then he walks out to them. And, and I, I, I just was reminded, like, that didn't happen in week four of their Christian discipleship. Right. It was two yeah. years into them yeah. walking with Jesus, right? Mm-hmm. To the point where the tests are always proportionate to God's belief in what you might have. Mm-hmm. To be able to bring to that yeah. test, right? Yep. Hey, but yeah, mm-hmm. you're right. It's always redlining. It's yeah. right on that. Like, I'm going to give God a yellow card versus a red card because He went mm-hmm. too far on this one, right? So uh, all that to say is, we 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 sit in our prayers and we sit in our songs and we say, God, we want to know You more, but we mm-hmm. rarely want it to come through a test, right? <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not always the most comfortable, um, but He's always faithful to not only meet you in the test. Uh, but to, you know, just like you did with the disciples, like another point of reflection was he calmed the wind mm-hmm. and calmed the waves. And so you could see that from, wow, God delivered me from this test. But then Jesus in the same breath said, why do you have no faith? Like, mm-hmm. and so I'm thinking, wow, sometimes we can mistake God s- sovereignly moving in a situation as like, God answered my prayers, yeah. and, and God, s- s- you know, saved me. And yes, He did. Praise God for it. And yet, right. miss the fact that maybe there's a place where I could have had more faith in this storm. Oh, I tend to, you know, you, I think you knew me enough that I tend to find that the times that God had to use God's outright sovereignty yeah. in the Scriptures, He's not always thrilled that He had to do that. Right? right. He He actually looks for people as the instruments. Yeah through which his great work can happen in the world. Yep. So sovereignty moments, I think, mm-hmm. is oftentimes a reference point for, it's like you I saved couldn't me, find but someone, yeah, right? or I I, you didn't have what it what took, yeah. so I had to step in, right? Exactly. Oh, my gosh. There's one of my favorite <laughs> passages, Psalm 37. It says, dwell in the land and cultivate faithfulness. And so um, part of what I navigate life with is like, okay, am I wishing myself out of a circumstance? Yeah. Um, and that may or may not be the appropriate action. In fact, most of the time, I think there's a place where I, I have to learn to dwell here. I can pray for God to move and open doors and, and, and all of that for sure. But while I'm waiting, I'll be found worshiping. I'll be found in faithfulness. I would have cultivated a faithful heart to the Lord in the midst of this yeah, here, here. land. And man, that's not always easy, yeah. uh, but it passes the test. That's right. You know? Here, here. Hey, and so we hope that thoughts like this help, right? 
Uh, one of the things you're going to be hearing in the next few weeks is about the role of community in our lives. We're, we're building toward the last weekend of this month. Actually, I think it's the 24th, 25th. We're bringing in new members, right? And, yep, uh, yep. and right. what it is in these days and age to say, yes, I want to be a part of a community. I want to move from an attendee to a member and what that yeah. means. By the way, not trying to throw that out as a guilt thing, but as much as people who recognize, like, I want to step into a form of relationship with this community. And so we're going to be reflecting on community for a couple of weeks. Just yep. what it means uh, to say yes to a people and to trust that the Spirit works through a people. So mm-hmm. we encourage you if uh, uh, to stay in touch, right? To make mm-hmm. sure you sign up for the E News. Make sure you consider connect groups when they roll around in yep. September, or even our growth groups and some new stuff that's brewing. Matt yeah. and I actually are walking out of this to work on some new discipleship stuff brewing. We hope you tune in for it. Any yep. other thoughts, Matthew? No, I'm just so thankful to be um, able to enjoy like you're talking about community just galen coming in Mm -hmm. and just being challenged by the word as one body you know it's not just a private thing it's Mm -hmm. it's collective yeah thanks for being part of ours and have yourself a great week see ya hey thanks again for joining us today we hope that you've been encouraged by listening and that you'll join us again next week you can listen to previous episodes find additional resources and of course learn more about us by visiting effortacommunitychurch.com